So last time I showed you all the 3D printed parts that I was printing one by one and sticking together. I've now stuck all the pieces together um, and I divided this into eighths and divided each eighth in half and printed them separately. So um, each eighth took just over two hours to print so it's been quite a lot of printing um, and you can see all the seam lines just about in the middle all the way around where I've sealed it together and I've done that by dissolving some ABS into some acetone to make a sort of ABS paste or glue and using that to stick all the parts together and then I've gone over the outside as well and um, sealed over all the seam lines some of these pieces I've smoothed out a bit more by brushing acetone all over which obviously dissolves ABS um, it's not 100% perfect, most of it lines up fine, there are a few splits in the pieces, some are worse than others that I've had to seal, which has made those pieces slightly longer, but on the whole they line up okay. So, um, the next thing is to try and get a finish on this that's uniform all over. There is a process called acetone vapour bath smoothing, which you boil acetone to get the vapour um, in a in a metal or glass jar with the item in and the acetone vapour eats away all over the surface over the course of about an hour and smooths it out to make it lovely and glossy and smooth. Um, the issue with doing that for this piece is it's rather large, this is um, 30 centimetres, 12 inches in diameter. Trying to find a pot that big um, is an issue and also I don't really want to boil that much acetone. So um, I've brushed over it a bit with some acetone to try and smooth it but you really need to leave the acetone wet for an hour to do it properly and you know that takes uh, it's hard to do it with a brush because the acetone just evaporates so um, instead of that I'm going to paint it with shed roof sealer which is this stuff which is a thick rubberized paint I've already done a small test sample you can see that this bit is a bit more matte than the rest um, I've done one coat there just to test it it's a bit more matte than I want, I really want a sort of satin finish rather than high sheen gloss or totally matte. So I'm going to do two coats of shed roof sealer um, and then we're going to hit it with some automotive satin black just to give it a sort of flat, shiny but not high gloss finish. And I've already tested a small sample on the bit of plastic and it all sticks fine, so essentially the shed roof sealer is primer. So that's two coats of roof sealer down. Um, it's looking pretty uniform all over. A nice consistent black, which I'm pretty happy with. You can still see some of the layer lines if I hold it in the light just right. And a few imperfections, but on the whole, I'm pretty happy with it. So um, let's hit it with some satin. So here it is with the satin paint on. Um, I'm trying to light this as best I can with two massive movie lights so you can see it, but uh, it's not too bad on the whole, there's a few imperfections in it and you can see some of the build lines but on the whole I'm fairly happy with that for something that I've made a replica of so now we need to move on to the lid obviously that has to be substantially better finished because it has to match the finish of the grinder so that again is going to be 3D printed and then we'll have to take more care with the finish to get a white glossy finish So I've got three pieces of the lid printed, each one took about an hour and a half um, and as you saw the support material was built up underneath each one of those pieces so I've got three here that fit together what I've done um, is got a piece of this sandpaper and sort of rubbed the edges on it just to take off any um, bits that shouldn't be there and now they fit together incredibly well, that's an incredibly tight fit so that is uh, just to one side, this is the front section, you can just about see this shape taking place where the coffee grinder fits and this piece here is the latch that um, latches the lid on. So again I'm going to stick these together with acetone, I've got some uh, acetone with ABS dissolved in it which I actually used to stick the prints down to the print bed and I bought a whole bunch of cheap paint brushes the last ones fell to pieces due to the acetone so again I'm just going to get a bit of a flat bench here let's get rid of that 
and we'll just stick these two together. Check there's no do a test fit there and check there's no gaps. We'll just brush a bit of this on each edge. Place those together, trying to line them up as best possible. And slide them around a bit once you've placed them, but they do stick and fix together quite quickly. So we'll just press the flat the sections that are supposed to be flat against a flat surface. And do the same with that on the edge of the table. So this piece is going to need quite a lot more cleaning up than the base because it's supposed to be glossy and shiny and have the same finish as the coffee grinder. It'll also need painting and possibly this will need painting, the grinder as well, so that the finish matches. But let's get the lid together and I'm probably going to sand out some of the lines in it and attempt to acetone vapour bath smooth it or at least acetone it with liquid so my lid sections are all stuck together and as you can see the whole thing fits together quite nicely. So <clears throat> there are, those are all the sections, those are all glued together with acetone. You can still see the seam lines there um, and if I hold it in the light just right you can probably still see the build lines. Now some of this I've um, attempted to sand out and then I've gone over it with acetone to try and smooth it out um, so that's where it's shiny. That piece particularly I worked on quite hard, which is almost smooth but not quite, but a lot of it is still quite textured. You can still feel the lines in it. So I'm going to attempt to acetone vapour bath smooth it. So the normal way to do this would be to put the item in a container with a little bit of acetone in the bottom um, and heat it up to boil the acetone to make acetone vapour which slowly eats away at the surface and that takes about 45 minutes. Um, I don't really want to boil that much acetone, I also don't have a metal or glass container big enough, so I'm going to try another method which involves just using acetone vapour cold. So I've got this plastic container that's made of polypropylene, um, which is also acetone safe. I've got my HDP, HDPE pot in there to put the item on, and I've used some magnets to stick paper towels all around the, all around the box. So we're just going to douse all of those in acetone, put the piece in, put the lid back on and leave that overnight. And hopefully that should be enough vapour to smooth all of the build lines out of the piece. Place that neatly in the middle and carefully put the lid on and we'll come back to that tomorrow. So it's been about 12 hours, um, I can see through the box, it looks pretty good. Um, I just wanted to point out that I did actually put the lid on properly at the end of the last shot where I just laid it on, I did actually clip it on. Obviously acetone is quite dangerous if you read the back of the container, it's flammable and also you shouldn't breathe in the fumes um, because it'll addle your brain. So if you're going to do this overnight, make sure you put it in a sealed container so um, you don't end up breathing the fumes in all through the night and getting drunk on acetone vapour fumes. So um, we're going to open the box very carefully so we don't tip the piece over. You should do this in a well ventilated area as well because obviously it's now got ABS dissolved in it. And hopefully you can see the piece is nice and shiny and glossy all over. I think I've possibly left it in for too long because I can actually see through it and see the infill inside. Um, so the ABS will go clear when you dissolve it in acetone. So we're going to put that outside to dry off a bit and then we'll see what we've got. So the lid has been outside for a good five or six hours in the sunshine and 
Um, it doesn't seem to have, other, well, the surface has dried out, but the whole thing is still quite rubbery and I can, you know, easily push sections of it. Um, it's smoothed quite nicely. I wasn't expecting the process to work at all, but it looks like I left it in there too long, so the ABS has really absorbed the acetone. It's still quite translucent. I can see the infill on the inside. I don't know if you can see the pattern. Um, it's also sort of like the sections have collapsed inwards slightly. All that was supposed to happen was it's smoothing the surface off, but, um, you know, you can see that some of the... Uh, the whole thing has melted, basically, and some of it has drooped, and that's made the brim very messy as well. It's um, slumped around the edge. This edge was supposed to be quite a sharp edge. Um, so I'm in two minds what to do. In one way, I quite like it because it matches the contours of the grinder. So you can kind of see that it's all nice and round, which matches this. However, that wasn't how it was in the movie. The corners were a lot sharper. So um, I need to put this back outside again, probably for a couple of days to see if the acetone will actually dry out of it if it will become opaque again and become quite hard like ABS. At the moment it feels like a sort of hard rubber that I can actually squidge around. Um, if that doesn't work then I'll have to print a new one unfortunately and then try putting that in the acetone bath but for maybe instead of 12 hours for maybe three, four or five hours and instead of doing it overnight I'll keep an eye on it while it's going so I can tell when it's done. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check my Facebook page for sneak peeks, pictures of the projects and future updates. Also you can find all of the pictures for this project on my website and a download for the digital model if you want to have a go at 3D printing it yourself. I do charge a small amount for the 3D models to help fund the projects, but you can also get a 100% discount coupon if you sponsor my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots. Have a look at that page. Um, you can sponsor me for a minimum of $1 a month to help improve the videos and help me achieve my goals. And then you'll get a 100% discount coupon for the digital models and also access to an exclusive live broadcast with me. Thanks for watching.